Hey everyone, today's investigation is going to be uh, one that exploded kind of um, into a much larger story than I expected. It started out just to be about a historic event that happened in Kingsport about a five-ton Asian elephant that became known as Murderous Mary. Most people know about the event at the end of this story that happened in Irwin where they ended up hanging this elephant. But uh, there's fewer details and fewer stories have been told about the beginning of the event that happened in Kingsport, um, just because there are fewer historic documents, fewer news reports about it. Um, there's a lot of, this story has been told in many different ways. Uh, there are old newspaper reports from 1916 about this incident that happened in Kingsport, and then, of course, the hanging of Mary in, in Irwin. There have been books written about this story, songs written about Mary the Elephant. So there's a lot to get into. There's a lot to cover. There are so many myths around this event on um, from the beginning to the end of the story. I'm going to try to cover. I'm going to visit each location in person. And we're going to do some deeper research to try to get to the bottom of what the truth is behind all of these different versions of the story. So let's dive into it. The story begins on September 12, 1916, when Sparks World Famous Circus, which was touring Virginia and Northeast Tennessee, the circus was scheduled to run two events on that day in Kingsport. There was a show midday, and then there was going to be a matinee show, which included a whole bunch of elephants, a whole bunch of uh, other animals, performers, uh, just the usual old style circuses that they had back in the early 1900s. The usual elephant keeper that took care of Mary the Elephant, the five-ton Asian elephant, uh, had to leave the show temporarily. Charles Sparks, the owner of Sparks' world-famous circus, had to hire a replacement for him. He decided to hire a transient worker who was from Indiana. His name was Walter Red Eldridge. Completely un untrained, inexperienced with working with elephants at all, but he really wanted to leave the town in Virginia he was in. He wanted to join the circus, so Charles agreed to hire him on and train him to become a elephant handler. Walter Red Eldridge was formerly working. He was basically a, a hotel worker. Different stories. Some say he's a he was a janitor. Some say he was a clerk. But regardless, he worked at the hotel where the circus last stayed at. In Virginia he was hired on and he assumed the role of the handler for Mary the elephant on September 12th 1916 the circus had the two big shows in Kingsport everything went smoothly after the evening matinee the elephant traders were scheduled to walk all of the elephants down to a nearby pond the Location was Center Street in Kingsport is today called West and East Center Street the location is not mentioned anywhere and very difficult to find. So after the evening matinee, the elephant handlers were scheduled to walk the elephants up Center Street to a nearby pond uh, to let the elephants drink and wade in the water and sort of get their break after the two big shows. And of course, when people saw this parade of big elephants walking up Center Street and all of the handlers riding on top of the elephants, including Walter Red Eldridge on top of Mary, Mary spotted the remains of a half-eaten watermelon on the sidewalk. She decided to go take a grab for it with her trunk. Red Eldred prodded her with the, they had elephant sticks, which was basically a hook at the end of a stick, and they would kind of um, tap that against the elephant. And the first time that Red Eldred did this on the side of Mary's head, she, of course she didn't like it, but nothing really happened until she reached again for the watermelon, and Red slammed the elephant stick against the side of her head, most describe it as pretty much whacking her on the side of the head with the elephant stick. For reasons that people debate to this day, Mary became enraged. She grabbed Eldridge with her trunk, wrapped it around his body, lifted him up in the air, and essentially slammed him or threw him against a wooden snack stand at the side of the street. Now back then the streets were dirt and there were troughs. Um, there's a trough along the 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 street, one of the witnesses, W.H. Uh, Coleman, said that he believed potentially Eldridge was already dead from the impact to the snack stand. Uh, unfortunately, Mary wasn't done. She was still enraged, and she essentially walked over to him, put her 
foot on top of his head, put all her weight on it, and crushed his skull. The scene was gruesome. According to witnesses, it was one of the most traumatic things they had ever seen. It was grotesque. Um, I won't go into all the details of the scene that they described, um, because I'm sure you can imagine. Other witness accounts of this event are all over the place. There are claims that she gored him with her tusk. Um, and of course, eight female Asian elephants don't have tusks, so at least we know that version of, of the story is, is false. Um, the, the event didn't stop there. Uh, a local blacksmith by the name of Hedgecox heard the commotion outside his shop, ran outside, saw, of course, the scene in front of him, the grotesque scene in front of him, used his, uh, his firearm, uh, 3220, and shot at Mary the Elephant several times. The caliber, of course, was only intended for small game. A 3220 is, is meant for um, deer and smaller. Uh, of course, you know that caliber hardly phased the elephant. Uh, didn't even make it through the hide. Not long after she became enraged, circus workers were able to calm the elephant. Um, the circus owner, Charles Sparks, rode his horse as fast as he could. He actually went so fast that, according to reports, he fell off the horse as he was approaching the scene. But once he got to the scene, onlookers at that point were pretty much screaming for blood. They wanted Mary to be executed. They wanted her to be shot right there on the scene. Charles Sparks told the onlookers, look, there's no gun in existence in the world that could kill an elephant this size, which wasn't true. But... At the time, it appeased the crowd. Everyone calmed down. They were able to separate Mary, bring her back to where it was safe. And um, for the time being, Charles Sparks probably in that moment hoped that it wouldn't get out, of, blow out of proportion, which of course it did. Before long, news of this attack spread and the entire community of Kingsport was calling for the execution of Mary the Elephant essentially saying, you know, she is guilty of murdering a human and she needs to be executed. If you can imagine, this community, including small children, had watched this elephant ruthlessly crush the life out of a human being, resulting in probably one of the most gruesome deaths that most of these witnesses had ever witnessed in, in their entire life. I'm sure many in the community were traumatized by it, and they wanted someone to pay for it. And Mary would essentially face the wrath of the Kingsport community. Um, the mayor of Johnson City even told Charles Sparks, look, the circus would not be allowed to stop in his town with such a dangerous elephant. This made the next stop for the circus, Irwin, Tennessee. As the day of the circus approached for Irwin, Sparks heard from a local reporter that some members of the Kingsport community were planning to bring, and this is true, a cannon to the Irwin Circus to essentially execute Mary with it. Um, Sparks realized that the Kingsport community was reaching mob mentality. They would not stop until Mary was executed, until he did something about, about Mary or he knew he would face an enraged mob in Irwin. We'll get to the execution of Mary the Elephant, but before that, I want to take a trip to Kingsport, to the Kingsport community, to see if I could find the general location of where Walter Red Eldridge was killed by Mary. I figured the best place there to find the location of the blacksmith shop in 1916 would be the local library, uh, would be the archives. Figured I'd find some newspaper clippings, maybe in the Kingsport Times, about the event. Maybe it listed the exact location, or I would find maps, um, historic maps. But um, that's where I want to head first. After I do that, I'll meet you right back here, and we'll continue on with the second half of the story. All right, so because this happened so long ago, uh, and the only information we have is that it happened on Center Street in Kingsport, we know there was a blacksmith in the area. We're gonna visit the archives at the Kingsport Library and see if we can't locate where that blacksmith shop was. Uh, help us kind of get a better idea of exactly where this event happened. So let's get going.
That is just super weird. No mention of the story in the Kingsport Times. And I looked at editions the week after, two weeks after, and there was no mention of what had happened, which is so weird. So, gonna have to find the location another way. All right, so obviously it's strange that the Kingsport Times did not have a story about the event that happened on that day uh, in their town. It's so weird um, that something so, um, in my opinion, newsworthy didn't make headlines. Um, maybe it was in a different newspaper, a different Kingsport newspaper at the time. The Kingsport Times was the one that was in the archive in the library. I searched, I basically searched for weeks, uh, weeks after um, editions of the newspaper for weeks after the event, found nothing. Um, so I decided what I would do next is, uh, there is a very good resource about the events that happened to Mary the Elephant in Irwin. In Irwin, the place is called the Clinchfield Railroad Museum. And I decided to go there and investigate the execution of Mary. Um, maybe there was something there that they had in, the, in their records that would indicate where the event, where the attack occurred in Kingsport. I was very pleased to stumble across a woman na named Martha Irwin at the Clinchfield Railroad Museum. Uh, the first day I went to the museum, I was informed by her that a man by the name of Charles Edwin Price had written a book titled The Day They Hung the Elephant. Apparently, Price had already investigated a great deal about the history, scouring through the ETSU archives, which was going to be my next stop. Um, and he, he searched the, uh, the archives for accurate information about the story. Um, that meant that I did not have to do all that research myself. It meant I had one of the probably one of the best sources of truth about Mary the Elephant without having to build it myself from scratch. So I bought a copy of the book while I was there at the museum. Martha Irwin told me that if I returned the next day, she would share a never before made public scrapbook of her grand uncles, who was not only a foreman for the railroad, um, but he also was one of the witnesses of the execution. A little later in this video, I'm gonna show you the interview I did with Martha Irwin. Before we, before we do that, let, let me explain the events in Irwin uh, when Mar Mary the Elephant got executed. This part of the story of Mary the Elephant continues on the next day, September 13th, 1916. The circus had moved on to Irwin, and Charles Spar Sparks by this point had promised the Kingsport community that at the end of the matinee show at Irwin, Mary would be executed for her crime at the Clinchfield Railroad Yard after that day's matinee. That evening, around 5 p.m., over 2,500 people had gathered at the railroad yard to watch her execution. Numbers vary. Some of the news reports had said upwards of 5,000 had attended. Regardless, there were a lot of people there. There was a huge crowd at the site of the execution. Sparks had Mary walk into the yard with the rest of the elephants to avoid raiding, raising her suspicion that there was anything going on differently than any other act the elephants had done before then. The procession of elephants began just like any other grand circus act, and many witnesses reported, though, that Mary seemed nervous. She seemed to know. She seemed to sense that something wasn't right. The circus workers wrapped large chains around Mary's neck, and a railroad derrick, essentially a, a railroad car with a huge crane on it, um, lifted her up after they wrapped chains around her neck. They lifted her up several feet off the ground, but after she kicked her legs a couple times, the chain snapped from the weight of this massive elephant, and she dropped to the ground, cracking her hip. Um, there was a moment of panic where there was essentially the people started trampling over one another to get away. They expected they would be facing Mary's wrath once again. For long, Everyone realized Mary wasn't capable of standing up, let, it, let alone crushing any of them. She was pretty much in shock. They quickly wrapped her neck with a larger chain, and they 
quickly hoisted her up in the air once again. Accounts of how long she hung before she was dead ranged from just a few moments to up to 30 minutes. Before long, there was no doubt that remained that this giant elephant was finally dead. Before we get to the evidence that revealed to the world why Mary had become enraged during the circus in Kingsport, let's head over to Irwin to see if we could get a view of the location where I believe Mary the Elephant was executed and I think also buried. So let's go take a look. Hey everyone, we're gonna get started in Irwin at the railroad yard where um, Mary the Elephant was executed. Um, I'm at the, this is the original depot, it's now the town library. Um, actually it looks probably a lot like it did back then. The hours are till two, so can't get inside there, but um, this is right near the railroad yard where this event supposedly happened. There's a parking lot right next to the depot where we can probably see the backside, but um, you could see the railroad yard back there. And uh, this time of year, actually, the coloring in the hills behind it is actually really beautiful. We're not full color yet, but you can see colors kind of coming in. It's beautiful here, but I am convinced this is the site where thousands of people from Irwin to surrounding communities, rumors of up to upwards of 2,000 people gathered here to watch the execution of Mary the Elephant. It's hard to imagine in today's world an entire community celebrating the, the execution of an elephant, even one that killed a human. But back in 1916, the Kingsport community especially wanted to see this elephant pay for what she had done, something they considered no less than murder. She wasn't transported anywhere else for burial. Before burying her, a veterinarian did a full examination of her body and determined that she actually had an infected tooth and a, a seriously infected tooth right around the spot that Red Eldred had, had struck her, had prodded her, which um, after the fact, after she was executed, kind of explained the events in Kingsport and what led up to this fateful day in Irwin. So the next day after I visited the railroad yard, I headed back to the Clinchfield Railroad Museum to talk to Martha Irwin in person, um, who remembers, she remembers hearing stories from her family about the execution of Mary the Elephant because many of her family members were there. Keep in mind that for many years, the community of Irwin would not speak about Mary's execution to the public. Number one, they felt that they had only served as Good Samaritan to help satisfy Kingsport's thirst for blood, for Mary's blood. Um, they were trying, the Irwin railroaders were trying to be good neighbors and set all of the communities back to peace, stop the mob mentality by taking care of this elephant for everyone once and for all and putting it all to bed. They were honestly trying to be good neighbors and good Samaritans by doing this execution. Through the years, as society changed and people started lashing out to find blame for Mary's execution, unfortunately, most people pointed fingers at the town of Irwin, even though the main driver for her execution was actually the community of Kingsport. If Irwin hadn't offered to help with their railroad equipment, the town of Kingsport would have found a way eventually to eliminate Mary themselves. People were trying to find guns from neighbors that were big enough to kill the elephant. Um, Martha Irwin has a record of someone, a, a Kingsport community member back then, who had actually gone to her father and asked him if uh, they could borrow his gun to use to shoot Mary. So that community was out for blood. Kingsport wanted this elephant dead. They would not stop until the elephant was dead. So now I'd like to share with you my interview with Martha Irwin. It's not a standard interview. It's not a face-to-face -face interview. Essentially, we were diving into the scrapbook and discussing all the details. Um, it included her family's eyewitness accounts of what happened to Mary's execution, um, pictures of her relatives, news clippings um, from the Knoxville Press and other newspapers, pictures, fantastic stuff. So let's get to that, that interview now. Hey everyone, I'm back at the Clinchfield Railroad Museum to talk to Martha Irwin. She has a scrapbook from her great-granduncle that she's going to be showing us uh, never-before-seen 
information. I'm very excited about this. This is the Clinchfield Railroad Museum. Uh, this is the front of it anyway. There's a whole, the actual museum is out behind it, but I'm very much looking forward to this conversation and to see what, what's in this scrapbook. So let's, let's go in. With more paint. There is. You know, a lot of them just got an apple. Yeah. Or something, but oh, look at that. More uh -huh. And a friend of mine. Huh. Uh, I told that her was, about that was the last drive up in South Boston, Virginia. Virginia. And so she's had And the date of that was this year. Mm -hmm. My great uncle said it was Addie that wanted, was so firm on having the elephant um, it's awful here is the last man that came you may have heard of him John North <clears throat> now I'll tell you what I think uh, we want to be as accurate as we can. Right. And um, the Carolina Clinchfield, uh, back in December the 1st, 1915, they made him master mechanic. I think he, if they did that in December 1915, well, the elephant was hung in the 6th. Yeah. Get a copy of that. That's why I think he was master mechanic. When that happened. That's that's a real good job. That's your um, your un great great uncle. Yeah, my grandfather's brother. Yeah, that is definitely proof that he was there, or at least he was working for the railroad at that yeah. point. Yeah, and uh, and in 1916. He would still have the same title. Yep. Now that is what I think. Do you know who asked? Mm -hmm. Do you know who asked who? Like, did Kingsport ask Irwin leaders to kill her, or was it Sparks that asked Irwin? Oh, I know. It's Andy Sparks and Charles came. And um, being my great uncle, he said he saw him come. All of the Clinchfield officials were there. Okay. And they listened. My great uncle, I believe, said that Abby was the one that wanted the elephant killed. Addie? That's Charles Sparks' wife. She wanted Mary killed. Because she killed before. Wow. And uh, they couldn't uh, continue with the circus because nobody would go because she was labeled murders Mary. Yep. He, he said Charles carried a walking stick. They didn't call it a cane, they called it a walking <laughs> stick. He sort of twirled it around. Do you think you can make you a good article on that? Oh yeah. <laughs> I like new information. I don't like just telling the same thing everyone tells. Do you know what I mean? You are like me. <laughs> and I would like for it to be something like my daddy said he considered the railroad the good samaritans mm -hmm. to help them out and when they brought that elephant from kingsport as i said with the one way ticket yeah <laughs> because she wasn't coming back yeah and um it just there is a good picture upstairs of the derrick in the historical room. You could, you may want to make a picture of the original photograph. This is the original photograph? Yeah, you'll want it. Yeah, I, I feel like the railroad was doing them a favor. I really do. We were doing a favor. Yeah. When they came to our doorstep, they came for help. Yeah. We didn't invite them. Yeah. I believe that uh, the higher powers told him never to mention it because it was swept under the rug. Right. And nobody talked about it. We didn't talk about it outside the family. Did he tell stories in the family at least? Oh, yes. 
Yes. What did, did he he said he was there? Yes. When it happened, what did he say? Can you remember things that he said about it? Uh, well, I've heard what my great uncle and my grandfather talked about. Then they passed it on to Daddy, and Daddy passed it on to us. And it was hush hush. We could talk about it. Okay, I think I'm gonna. I think I'll tour the house and take a picture of that. Okay, it's it's upstairs. Uh, Denise can show you. Okay. It's, it's upstairs. Before burying the elephant, a veterinarian examined Mary and determined that she had a severely infected tooth exactly in the location where Red Eldridge had prodded her the second time. This final piece of evidence helps us put the entire story into perspective. Mary the elephant was simply an animal suffering in pain. And when that pain was multiplied with a blow from a prodding hook, she acted probably like many humans would react without pause and in pure reactionary mode. Her response ended in the death of a human, and for that, Mary was doomed by the town of Kingsport to be executed. Mary the Elephant's spirit lives on in many ways. Several plays have been written that dramatize the story, such as George Brandt's Elephant's Graveyard. Chuck Brodsky wrote a song titled Mary the Elephant. Numerous books and short stories mention her. There was even an antique store in Irwin called The Hanging Elephant, which is closed today. More recently, for a few years, up until about 2022, the town of Irwin held a festival where fiberglass elephants decorated by local artists were uh, populated Main Street in Irwin. They donated the proceeds of the festival to a elephant refuge a, um, for circus elephants that had been rescued. The story of Mary the Elephant should remind us that while we may struggle to understand the actions of our relatives and our ancestors in the past, we should also remember that people operate as a society and every person within that society contributes to its actions in some way. However, those of us alive today who were never part of that past should continue to tell those stories and to never forget them. Not to shame or cast blame, but to learn from the mistakes of the past. Mary the Elephant wasn't a perfect victim of this story, and neither was Red Eldridge. But Red was a human, and humans have a conscience and the ability to tell right from wrong. And we have to remember that animals like Mary are not always aware of the impact of their actions. Animals don't know right from wrong. They only know hunger from pain. What the story of Mary the Elephant reminds us is that it's dangerous to project human emotions or intentions onto animals. How can an animal murder when they don't even understand the meaning of hate? So let's always remember the tragic story of Mary and the lessons it teaches us about how we should treat and how we shouldn't treat animals. Thank you all for watching and don't forget to subscribe. And I look forward to seeing you here next time.